States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Look, please call the roll. Here. Here. I'd like to announce that there will be a policy and planning meeting following the regular council meeting to discuss uh, the event, venue, drafted ordinance. And we will do that. Uh, we will make a game time decision based upon how late in the evening it is, uh, whether we defer that to a later time or whether we discuss that this evening. So, move on to number two, approval of the tentative agenda. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Mr. Island? Support. Support uh, Peterson? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, oppose, no, clerk, call, roll. Liam Stryland? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Young? Yes. Bachelman? Yes. Rainer Yes. Steve Yes. Yes. Okay, carried. On the number three, certified list of police officer candidates. Mike, if you'd explain, please. Well, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to refer everyone's attention to the big board for a brief presentation on this item. And as background on this, uh, this past January 28th, the Bank of Civil Service Commission conducted interviews with a comprehensive review of the competitive testing process that we thoroughly, in which we thoroughly vet potential police officer candidates. Uh, the candidates are passing all phases of the competitive process and satisfying the standards set by the Police Department and the Civil Service Commission are listed up here on the big board. Now, with this, it's my understanding the approval of this list tonight is the Patrol Police Chief authority to hire anyone off this list with it as well. So, in summary, um, these were the candidates that passed all phases of the police department's test here and were approved by the Tulsa Civil Service Commission. And Chief Lukowski, do you have anything to add or fill in the details of that? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Uh, Brandon Hort, or I'm sorry, Bachoven and uh, Steve Out. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, opposed, no, clerk, call the roll. Bachoven? Yes. Steve Out? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Yes. Randall Horst? Yes. Dan Stryland? Yes. Carried. On to number four, appointment of Bruce Borgie to the Historic Preservation Commission. I would like to appoint Bruce Borgie to the serve on the Historic Preservation Commission. Mr. Borgie is a lifelong resident of Pella and graduate of Pella High School. Mr. Borgie holds a BA degree in business management from Central College and has been employed by Pella Corporation for the last 20 years. He currently works in the design assurance, the test lab, Prior to joining Pella Corporation, Mr. Borgi spent a dozen years as a businessman owning and operating the Record Collection <coughs> Limited, a retail, a retailer of pre-recorded music. Mr. Borgi currently serves as a board member of the Pella Historic Trust, Oakwood Cemetery, and the Friends of the Pella Community Center, and has served on the board of many other nonprofit community organizations in the past. Mr. Borgi has a passion for researching, compiling, and writing about Pella history. He lives with his wife, Cindy, at 614 Monroe Street. And if approved, Bruce's term would expire on January 1, 2022. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Support. Rander, Rander Horst and Bachoven. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, suppose no. Clerk, call the roll. Rander Horst? Yes. Bachoven? Yes. Dan Stryland? Yes. Steve Allen? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Period. Number five, I'd like to announce that there will be a closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Chapter 388.9 sub 1 uh, to discuss marketing and pricing strategy or proprietary information of the city utility if its competitive position would be harmed by public disclosure not required of potential or actual competitors and if no public purpose would be served by such a disclosure. After that one is complete, we will have a second closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Chapter 21.51J to discuss the purchase or sale of a particular real estate only where the premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price the governmental body would have to pay for the property or reduce the, the governmental body would receive for the property. Move on to the public forum. Uh, if there's anyone in attendance that would like to address the council regarding any agenda items, Please step forward, speak into the microphone, give us your name, where you live, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Seeing no takers, we'll move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Or 
Board off. Support Ben Stryland. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I have yes. a comment. Um, sure. On 2A, since I wasn't here at the last meeting, um, 2A references the um, conversation around a proposed study of whether or not parking is needed downtown. Um, I, I just, I chuckled at that just a little bit after I reread it twice to make sure I wasn't reading something wrong. Um, I just want to make sure that, that we, I mean, I can't believe we would question that. Um, Removing 24 parking spots for those that haven't went down there and counted it is the equivalent to one side of a city block. And, and the fact that we would even consider reducing parking spaces by 24 has me pretty concerned. So I would just, uh, we, we have to do this, you know, we have to have parking. And I don't know that a study um, spending that kind of money is necessary when we know the obvious answer there. So I just wanted to go on record. Necessary, absolutely everybody in the community would agree it's necessary. This is actually a little bit more than that. Sure. Gives us that's fine. Of, so. Just but it's a time. great question. It's a great question. All right, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, oppose no, clerk, call roll. Speed out? Yes. Ben Stryland? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Young? Yes. Bob yes. Greater Horse? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. We'll move on to uh, petitions and communications. Item number one, fiscal year 1920 funding request presentation from the Pella Area Community and Economic Alliance. Mike, could you explain it, please? Hey, yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to actually turn the floor over to Ms. Karen Mason, the executive director of the Peace Alliance. And Karen is here to present the Peace <coughs> Alliance's funding request for our fiscal year 2019-2020. This would be the fiscal year that will start on July 1st, 2019. It is important to note that we will be discussing the represent 155 of our employees in our community from our members. It represents 122 different businesses. So the power of bringing all of that passion, that knowledge, that expertise together allows us to do a lot of things more nimbly than we could if we just had one particular or two particular doors. Those four councils are really focused on four areas all in an economic development light. Infrastructure, working on and with <coughs> the city of housing to address needs, fiber, childcare, which we'll talk about, talent development, which affects almost every business in our community, business resources, making sure our existing businesses and those that are looking to start up in our community have what they need, and also placemaking, making sure our community is a place where people do want to live and is attractive. In the infrastructure, really the housing, we have been talking about that since the study came out right around 2016. Our very early conversations spurred a lot of that interest from local builders, from developers, from investors, and we are now seeing as you are approving some of those plans and site plans, um, we see that come to fruition. We'll continue working on some of those areas, and I know Mike uses this slide 
I use this slide as kind of a barometer to where we are with our goals. Really working on this year with rental housing. How do we fire that same passion and that same energy around attracting more rental units to our community? Our housing um, also is not only focused around creating those partnerships to bring us housing, but we also have a committee that is looking at addressing some of the issues with our employers around commuting. We have a good majority of our workforce that commutes into our county every day. We are looking at other communities as examples, looking at similar programs, similar structures that they have that they've had success with that we can utilize here. Right now, um, one of the subgroups is working on a rental incentive assistance incentive program to encourage those people who now commute to live in the community. Not only good for our employers, but good for our tax base as well. It's a concept that was floated out to our larger employers. Um, there was some interest in really formulating what that program would look like, so we'll take that back to them and see if that will address their needs. Obviously, this will take a few years to develop, but at the same time, we need rental housing to develop, so it will be on track with that. It's been a really exciting and gratifying process over the last eight, nine months on the high-speed broadband in municipal utilities. We have been very happy to assist Mike and his team, as well as the city, with really looking at what does our community calling on experts from our local companies who have that IT knowledge that they can lend. Um, and I believe you guys will be reviewing that later this month um, of that culmination of work. You guys have done an excellent job in just nine short months. We went from an approval to now a business plan before you. So thank you for making that a priority. I know all the citizens or most of the citizens in Pella will thank you as well We also worked on public relations around the replacement airport. As you know, this is an imperative amenity, um, not amenity, a tool for our local employers that are here today, also the ones that will be here tomorrow. We had a public relations effort that we partnered with the Mahaska Community Development Group on really looking at and putting messaging out there around what this means to our area not just to one or the other respective community. We created a Facebook page, we created a website, we have videos that talk about taxes, jobs, our community. Um, we put three out so far, they have been viewed almost 66,000 times. We have two more that will be released over the next couple of months. We put out Facebook posts up to 10 times per month, not only on the airport and its importance, but also what our is able to uh, compete with and be global. We are looking at celebrating what we do as well. This will also continue as this is a major need for our employers. We also look at industrial land. We have been looking at this for a while. Where does that make sense? Where can we utilize the infrastructure that's already in the ground? Um, this was a conversation that we started very early on in 2017, using the comprehensive plan as our guide, also looking at other landowners that would be willing to sell. Some of those conversations early on in our Economic Development Council really sparked the interest of companies that are looking to expand as needs met what they wanted and needed for their expansion. Lately, announced right after the first year that they are committed to Pella and will be expanding here. So we have been working with them to locate a piece of land or a site that will work for their needs based on those early conversations. And we also keep track of our leads that come in. What are companies looking for when they are looking to locate or expand? These were the stats from 2018. They are very similar to what they have been over the past few years. We also use this 
as we look to the future of what land do we need to have available because of what size companies are looking for. We don't want to have a piece of land ready that's too small. We don't want to uh, maybe retain land that is too large that will sit idle for a while. The 2018 stats really match in past years sites. Companies are typically looking for 10 to 15 acres. If they're looking for a building, it's usually between 20 and 60,000 square feet. We also share this with our local builders. We had um, a couple of buildings that have gone up that they really wanted to know what companies were looking for, so they weren't building a spec building that was not right sized. Um, they went up and actually they were rented immediately due to several circumstances. We talked about talent and development. One of the areas that we are really looking at is child care. And Tony, to your point, um, we actually did a study on child care, knowing what the answer was. Um, we are short of available child care spaces, but why we needed to do that study was to really learn what type of care was desired from our employees, what our <coughs> employers were looking to do in the future, and also from our local providers what their needs were. The surveys went out last fall. We wrapped up that portion. We are now on to phase two, which is really diving into that data and creating a strategic plan of how to implement childcare in our community that will meet the needs today and in the future. That final plan should be available at the end of March, pending no more meetings canceled due to weather. Also in the talent development arena, in 2018, we dipped our toe into a new venture, which was virtual career fairs. Just like the career fairs you physically attend, these are done virtually, so you are live chatting with the candidate. We participated in one from Platteville, Wisconsin. It's an engineering school that our company has success in recruiting individuals. We also participated in one out in California for IT engineers. Uh, we did have a couple of success stories for people that were hired into our community. And coming up this spring, we will take part in two much larger virtual career fairs, one sponsored by Big Ten schools, one sponsored by Big 12 schools. Those are obviously much closer to home, and we look forward to visiting with all of those new grads that will be looking for careers. Oops. We also held focus groups, um, community conversation focus groups, really around Pella becoming a welcoming community. We know we need to attract new talent into our area, so we asked our companies to select a focus group of four to five individuals that they felt was a diverse, diverse group for their employee base. We not only looked at companies, we looked at healthcare and schools. So we talked to some groups that were young professionals because they were diverse for their workforce. We talked to a, gal, or a group of females because that was diversity in that particular employer's workforce. And then we also talked to Warren Lauren. What we wanted to really have a conversation around was what attracted them to Pella and what do they define as a sense of community? And do they, they find that here? And if not, what could we be doing better? So we learned several things. We will continue those conversations um, in the next year. And we'll talk about some of those that, things that we learned um, that we can easily address things that they maybe miss from where they have lived prior or things they want to see here, some of which we actually offer here. They just don't know about it. So we need to work on really promoting what we already have here. The other initiative that we kicked off right at the end of the year was the Pella Talent Pipeline. We brought employers, healthcare, we brought education together to really look at the workforce that we have in our own backyard. How can we give them the best opportunities to achieve the most potential? We have four to five groups that are looking at and studying different initiatives for this year. We have a report coming back in October, or in April, excuse me, of what that would look like, what are some of the factors that need to be in place for that to happen, and what 
challenges would we expect to have to overcome? All around how to really develop our workforce, whether that is in the early learning years, whether that is K through eight, high school, postgraduate, or even lifelong learning. Business resources, this was really all about and will continue to be about learning, providing resources, and connecting opportunities for our businesses. And I won't go through all of these, but these were all designed to really give tools to businesses that are existing today, starting up connections that they need to peer to peer, or connections they need to help solve problems. In any given month, the Business Development Council will put on between four and seven different events all around connecting and learning Take a look at your upcoming events for the ACE member newsletter that comes out to you. Um, and if you'd like, please stop by any of those. That same group will also be looking at a session or a series, depending on how they break that up, around can your business survive or pass the hit by the bus test. We all know that's a metaphor for some type of event of disruption. We saw a very powerful example of that last summer with the tornado that hit Vermeer, Marshalltown. Some businesses between the communities were equipped to deal with that. Others went out of business. Some are still trying to figure out how to recover. Giving those tools to our businesses will also create value so when they do uh, want to exit their business, they actually have something that they can sell. <coughs> we all know natural disasters come in many forms. Along those same lines of giving tools and resources, I have the pleasure of meeting with a lot of entrepreneurs who want to start a business, some that want to expand, and we're very happy to provide those resources, answer questions, but we all know that that doesn't necessarily happen between eight and five. We can look at our Google Analytics and see how many people are on our webpage looking for those resources, so we want to make sure that we have that are in the process of interviewing new businesses, those that have been in business between 12 and 18 months, to really learn from them what type of challenges they had. Was it necessarily setting up their business? Was it a regulatory process that they didn't quite know how to navigate? So a lot of that information is driving what our new website will look like. This group, and also the Pella Talent Pipeline, will also be investigating business incubator here in our community to really encourage those startups and give them the support that they need very early on so they can concentrate on getting their business developed instead of having to manage some of those day-to-day -day administrative functions. The last area we're really concentrating on, place making. So creating the community through events. We have um, events that we're very familiar with. Thursdays in Pella, holiday season, Fridays on the canal. But we also had an event right after the first of the year where we invited our members to come in and give us their ideas of things that they would like to see in the community. We had roughly <coughs> 40 people participate. We got four pages of ideas on what we can add as far as activities or events to the community. So we will be working on what that looks like how can we implement that, or who can we help um, or partner with to implement some of those? The other thing that we did learn was a lot of the ideas that were being generated were already being planned or have already taken place or ongoing. So again, a lot of education, which sometimes can be a challenge because people get their information from many different sources. So one of the um, things that we will be coming or we will be having on our calendar is a gathering of all the marketing and communication individuals from the companies to really put our heads together and figure out how can we continue through their channels or create a new channel to reach even more people in our community to let them know of the wonderful things we have here. Not on the slide, but definitely something that we will also continue to do um, is to look at our available 
downtown area or downtown, what makes sense to put there? We saw a couple of restaurants that have closed um, recently. What can we do to replace those? So that will be on our to-do list as well. I just wanted to thank you on behalf of PACE for our partnership over the past. We have really appreciated it. I hope you have and continue to utilize PACE as a resource. Um, we can rally troops if you need expertise in any areas or if you need background or any connections. So again, I want to thank you. We also want to request a continued partnership at the exact same level as the past two years at 30,000. So with that, I would entertain any questions if you have any. I'd like to I have a couple, and a couple comments, if I if I may. <coughs> um, what other levels are there? We have um, we have a thirty thousand, we have a fifteen thousand, a ten thousand, a five thousand, and twenty five hundred, <coughs> and a five hundred and fifty. Would you uh, make those that information available to us, and what each one of those categories um, would enable the community to? Uh, what we would get for that money? I mean, I have to look at things as, as if I were a business person because, quite frankly, I, I am a business person. And I always look at cost versus reward, results, and, and those kind of things. And, and as you said, this is our third year now with the PACE group. Um, and again, I'll, I'll go back to the same kind of comments that I've made the last couple of years. And I don't know if the rest of the council will necessarily agree with me or not. but. Um, we do great at planning, and we do great at studies, and, I, I, and we do great at looking at things, but we don't do great at actually getting results. I would be really interested in knowing what has PACE done <coughs> in the last three years that would have not have happened if it weren't for PACE. I, I understand the housing study. That was done by the county, not by PACE. No, right? And all of the housing, or so much of the housing, and all of those results, the rental units, all the developments, and all those things are all from investors that not necessarily had anything to do with PACE. They, maybe some, but not all. So, I mean, I'm looking at some of those things and saying, yep, you know what, we do have 19% of our goal for the housing. That's great. But what are those results attributable to PACE? Because you're asking us to spend $30,000 to do that. And from my perspective, I need to look at that and say, are we getting $30,000 worth of benefit to the community? Or would we be better off taking that $30,000, hiring, e hiring an economic development person within the city and creating our own department that's focused only on the businesses, the open storefronts, the housing needs, all those infrastructure things that quite frankly generate additional tax revenue. And one of the things that you didn't mention up there that has always been for as long as either PACE or Chamber or PADCO were around, the precursors to PACE, has always been the governmental trips. Go out to Washington, D.C. to visit with uh, our, our congressional delegation. We've always had that every year, and the last few years, I've had to chase after you guys in order to get that scheduled. I intentionally did not chase after you this year. So far, now we're into February, still don't have any word on that whatsoever, so I suspect it's probably not going to get done this year. It's actually in the works. <clears throat> I'm sorry? It's actually in the works. Okay, very good. That's great to hear. Uh, when, we, when we were actually getting it done in March, we were getting notified of that in December. And now it's February. We are now trying to coordinate that with the Greater Des Moines Partnership. Uh, you're you're deferring to that to the Des Moines Partnership. You're not doing it for the community. You're doing it for the Des Moines no. Partnership. No, we try to time it because we do have some members that attend the call, so we don't have to fly out twice. Okay. Very good. I would like to know what, what we've actually accomplished in our own right, what we're getting for that $30,000, and not just planning not just forms and processes and procedures that really don't have anything behind them other than to come to the city and say, 
we developed this great plan, here you go, you guys implement it and pay for it. I think one of the things we have the ability to do and do very well is convene not only our businesses, but to keep the pulse on that. The child care study that we are doing, we are putting in a strategy and quite frankly, in order to attract talent, we are going to have to um, solve that issue. That would not be Don't miss a, please don't miss it. I'm not saying that you don't have any value. That's not that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying give me a reason to spend thirty thousand dollars next year. Because we've we've been putting money in this process for years and and now the rubber needs to hit the road and we need to figure out are we getting what we're paying for? And I'll get off my soapbox. I like to say a few things. Go ahead. Which will mirror a lot of what you're saying. But I would like to go back to slide two, if we could, well, the one on the housing progress. I think it's slide two, or maybe three. It's a little different number. Yeah. Here's my, my sense. I've been able to represent the, the city council on these PACE uh, board meetings. And what strikes me with this slide in particular, I think you gotten to a, a little bit of a tomb here. But what strikes me here is that this slide is on a PACE um, report, uh, presentation. And if you look at that gray area that has the 19% um, of the goal of 966 units, that gray area signifies significant amount of time and energy and progress in the housing issue on the staff of our city. I, that, uh, that shows a little bit of what PACE has done. And what really ought to be up there is another, or at least one more bullet that, that pinpoints that this work is being done by the city staff, spending countless numbers of hours dealing with major housing developments that PACE has not been involved <coughs> with for quite some time. Now that study that you mentioned came out in 2016, I guess. And I guess that time frame, maybe PACE had some involvement in starting and some inspiration. And, but at this point, PACE isn't doing it. I've been on the council for two years now. And what I've seen with this PACE Alliance is a lot of paperwork being done. And, and what I would have thought, since they did the study, pinpointed how much of an issue the housing is for the city, that they would have taken some initiative to go out and do some promoting, go out and talk to developers, go out and seek uh, funding sources or talk to funding sources. And I haven't seen any reporting of that taking place at a PACE board meeting. What I have seen is paper coming through saying this is what we've been doing, having very little impact on housing progress. Our staff in this city has been working hours, probably overworking, in this area. I would agree with you. Mike works extremely hard and staff. What you don't see are the conversations that we do have with developers. We continue to visit with them, um, try to run our interest, um, see what the needed conditions are to make a business plan for them to come in. We are ongoing with those conversations. Now, some of those are confidential, so we don't report those out. But they 
both Karen and I have been at board meetings where confidential um, information has not been said, but, prog but information has been given that these things are in the works. I have, I have not heard anything about what you're talking about, talking to developers. I'm talking about it, one instance, maybe a few instances in businesses. I have never heard any conversation, any reporting on what you've done with these developers that you're talking about. That's all, that's all I'm saying. There has been nothing mentioned in case board meetings. Now, if it's happening behind the scenes, why isn't it being reported to the board? Because other things in the business sector have been. I hope so. That's what I'm. That's the point I'm making. And that is merely a report out. I think when we report out from each council, I can have Del Collins, who's the chair of that, detail that out more. Oh, and I would like to see even more specifically some type of a strategy developed for some instead of paperwork. I'd like to see some real hard focus that would what that would put. I don't know if this is. a well, well described, but boots on the ground. That specific things are being done in order to increase that 19 percent. Because this is going to be, this is forecasted for 2025. That's six years from now. And so I think some real hard work needs to be done on promoting and in, and seeking out, not waiting as you reported with your. Um, last last uh, infrastructure slide, I think it was about uh, contacts coming in, leads coming in from the Greater Des Moines Partnership. Is that that information goes out to communities all over the metro area? We need to be focused on what is Pella doing for Pella, it's particularly in this issue. And the results is. That's your point. And that's my point. Right. Talked to 10, landed one. That's fine, 10%. Uh, right now, it's talk to a bunch. Or, or and, 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 and besides that, you know, what are they saying that they need? That's what we need as well. Because if we're not offering, we're just going to be spinning. And maybe we do need to bring in some expertise to deal with this issue. Because I'm not sure. And, and let me say this again. I'm not sure that we lay people have economic development skills or knowledge or experience. And I'm willing to admit that. If somebody came to me who wanted to know what was available here in Pella, I wouldn't point out and try to influence them to come. I would immediately suggest, <laughs> unfortunately, Mike, I would immediately suggest talk to our city administrator because there's planning, there's zoning, there's infrastructure, there's a whole host of things that that Mike readily can point to or go to planning and zoning, go to uh, the city staff and get some immediate answers. And I think our I think our knowledge base, and I'm going to include paces. Because they're lay people as well. I don't know any economic development people that are on this council. And so if they come to you, you personally, I don't know how you respond except maybe going to say, this is what we have available. Or do you say, go to the city. Go and talk to the city administrator. Pardon me? concerns that I have, um, both as a council member and as a business owner, is that I feel that PACE and also in your organizational structure, you have a high concentration 
primarily to our downtown small businesses, but yet your organization encourages all of us to join that. And I feel like the organization as a whole, for those of us that are small business individuals, um, it's almost segregationalist, if you will. The, your structure, it's, it's right there on page one. It's a downtown development council. And that would be something that I think that PACE, if you are taking revenue from all areas of our community, and you are a business-minded organization, you have to include everyone. You have to include the, the uh, east, the west, the north, and the south. That would be a suggestion to you. But I think as you set it up, the intention um, is to have all of the businesses represented and or benefit from specifically the Business Development Council. Um, there is a council definitely um, for the downtown because that is a unique element uh, to our community as well. Um, but between the two, Like the mayor said earlier about the Washington trip and having to, I, I feel that as an organization, it's the organization's responsibility to come to the businesses and say, how can we support you? It shouldn't be a, my responsibility to say, Karen, I need to talk to you about this or that. I mean, you, you should be taking the temperature of the uh, the health of businesses in all areas of our community. You're the one that should, that should be taking that temperature. Like Mayor said, you should be setting up the trip. But particularly for, for your members. So I'm, I'm just telling you what different business people have come to me as a representative of the ward because I think it's good information for you to have. Um, you know, Karen, <laughs> I know you're just the spokesperson for your organization, right? So I feel a little sorry for you right now, but um, as we approach these budget meetings <coughs> next week, I think it would be really beneficial for you or someone from your organization, one of your board members. You know, as I read through this presentation, um, my feeling is this is nothing more than a work report of 90% of the projects that city staff has started or led from some point. Uh, as, as I'm walking through this thing, I'm sitting here asking myself, if I could pick in here something that, that PACE specifically started on its own from their own grassroots initiative. And, and so, if I, I could be missing it. But, but to me, that's something that this body needs to understand because the feeling for myself, I don't want to speak for anyone else, is that this is just a lot of regurgitation of things that we already know about, that we're already working on, or that city staff is already working on. So as we've expressed in the past, the heartburn of spending $30,000 has not gotten any easier for us this year, I don't feel like. You know, when I, when I talk to some of your board members and they tell me about this great program where they're identifying the strategy to use LMI and how that should work, I, I stand back on my heels and think, well, that's not something that, that we as a community determine. That's a, that's a, a process that's decided you know, in, in Washington and other places like that. So I, I'm curious why those committees are spending time rehashing policies that they cannot influence. So, so that's one thing that I would like a little clarity, you know, maybe from someone in your organization. Um, you know, over the, this past 12 months, I've had um, I've been really blessed to get a lead a small manufacturing company here in town. And as I listen to you talk about talent development and small business needs 
and land acquisition and all these things, I think to myself, man, you know, this company's been in this town for 65 years and in the last 12 months, I haven't heard from one person in any of these committees talking to us about what PACE can bring to us other than the, the letter I got in the mail asking us to be a member. And so I, that, that kind of thing resonates in my mind when I sit here and think about how other businesses feel in this town that, that aren't located downtown or aren't an anchor on one end of this community. So I would just encourage you to share with your boards that they need to get outside of the box and stand on their own a little bit. Um, the Greater Des Moines Partnership is great for Greater Des Moines, but, but I hear that all the time. Well, we're working with Greater Des Moines Partnership. We're, I don't care what they're doing because it's not affecting us directly. I, I would love to be able to sit at one of these budget meetings next week and say, you know what guys and, and ladies, we should do it because here are the five things that PACE and their organizations did on their own. They did, Laley came to the table. The table didn't go to Laley and say, hey, let us help you find land. That, that's nothing new. So again, I know you're just spokesperson for your committees and so I apologize for taking it out on you, but, but those are the kind of things that if you really expect the city to pay $30,000 again this year, that we need some clarity to. And if we're not, at a level where we can know about some of these developers that are inquiring about wanting to make significant contributions to the community who will also be asking for significant contributions financially, then that's a problem. And, and we need to figure that out as well. So I'll also get off my soapbox now, but. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll also follow that up with some of the things we do are intangible, but very important to the community and to our employers. Workforce So give us an example of a <coughs> tangible recruitment tool that you have come to the table with that works. Virtual career fairs, we're just getting into. Tell, the Pelotalent pipeline, we are just kicking off. So, so how many people have we been able to glean from those two tools? That's something that we're not able to put a number on unless we would poll every company and they would be able to give us that information. But surely they would be able to say, Ramirez Philcorp should be able to say, Hey, you know what, Karen, that, that tool is great. We've been able to hire three people from that. Uh, I can't imagine, I mean, they have staffs of people that hire people. So we don't have that information? It's hard to get, but I can tell you from the one career fair that we did, we do have three hires. And the only reason we do know that are from people we chatted with and followed up with. It's not information that the companies do want to share. Um, that's nothing bad on them. We may, you may want to just send out a note to them and just say, hey, we did this, was it effective? And did you find great leads? I mean, that's that's all we're asking for yeah. is to say, show us some success other than just say, we're planning for more, we're looking at that, and we're looking at this, and we're doing this. It just sounds like a whole bunch of gobbledygook talk mm -hmm. with no success, and oh, by the way, I need another 30 grand. But here's what I would challenge you to do, is to attend any one of our council meetings where we do have Of uh, the tasks that PACE has been uh, given to perform, which area do you feel is the weakest and needs the most work? The area that I think needs the most work, not because it's the weakest, because it's the hardest, is workforce recruitment. And that's universal in the state of Iowa and in many places. Recruiting talent, especially to rural Midwest, is tough. We have great jobs. We uh, need housing. We're working on that. You know, child care sometimes can be a barrier, but really getting people to look at rural Iowa um, when right now metro living um, is definitely a trend is an uphill battle, but it's what we're willing to work on. So, what is space? 
is going to uh, make us stand out or think outside of the box or do something unique that puts us in front of the line of every other community. You say it's statewide. Actually, I think it's nationwide. But what has Pace done to really help us as business people look for help? Other than a video uh, conference um, uh, fair, as you talked about, I mean, I'm 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 searching here, Karen. What talk? To me. Um, one of the things that we are hearing from the companies that we are addressing is really giving our housing orders. So um, Childcare needs. They have people turn down jobs because of the challenge finding childcare. Housing. Um, ourselves um, in the recruitment process has been very successful. Um, running our Hello Pella program um, really assists company with turnover. So as part of the interview process, the candidates go on tours with our staff of the community to take a look at not only where they're going to work, but where they're going to live as a recruitment and Good. We'll move on to uh, resolutions number one, resolution number 5946, entitled Resolution Approving a Professional Services Agreement with Klingner and Associates for Engineering Services Associated with the Tuttle Cabin Learning Walkway Project. Mike, could you explain, please? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to. I'd like to refer everyone's attention to the big one for a brief presentation. I'm excited. <coughs> As the mayor said, with this resolution, we do is approve a professional services agreement with Klingner and Association, uh, Klingner and Associates, excuse me, for the Tuttle Cabin Learning Walk. Project. Now, as background on this, the Old City Council approved a partnership with the Historic Tuttle Trust on November 20th, and the partnership was expressly created for this project. And specifically, um, as we said, that the contract of the agreement was to create the learning block, which the goal is, is to link the Tuttle Cabin and the Sunken Garden Park using an existing, existing naked alleyway. We have a map of the alleyway here very shortly as well. Now, as Council is also aware, um, the proposed agreement this evening partnership with this work of trust. What the agreement calls for is that 100 percent of the project cost, construction cost of the project to be funded by the historic color trust. The city would own the 
accommodation you would actually need in the project as well. So let's go ahead and wait for it. Now as far as the overall cost of it, we have the certificate of various components under the agreement. The total of the agreement here is just shy of $25,000. And the council order to improve this resolution this evening, we have listed up here the tentative timeline for the project, which will be a kickoff meeting on February 11th. And ultimately we'd be looking at having final construction documents completed by April 15th of this year. That would put us in line to hold a bid meeting soon after April 15th of the project, which would allow summer and fall construction of the Northern Law. Now with this, we get going up to speed. Sunken Gardens is located right here. Lincoln Street is down here. The Tuttle Cabin is right over here in the vacated alleyway that we're talking about constructing the storm or the Northern Law is located right in here. So that's it. That's it. And with that, Mr. Mayor, that concludes our presentation this evening. We'd be happy to answer any questions the Mayor and Council may have on this item. Thank you, Mike. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Okay, I heard Baco, but some more stood up. You were louder than Bruce. He's closer. How's that? Uh, any discussion? Is it just a, a, a concrete sidewalk? Is that what's going to be, or is it going to be? It's a trail that's more uh, more of a natural trail with okay. uh, it's not, not necessarily wood not chips, not but or something. It, it, it's, it's a little bit unclear. I think the intent is to have something with a historic feel to it, but yet have good ADA compliance and that yeah. kind of thing. And right. the engineering okay. people, they actually bring some background. Clinger brings some nice background depth, so we're eager to hear what options they bring to it. Cobblestone? <laughs> <laughs> But it's either that or mud. What do you want for the 1850s? You know? <laughs> Any other comments? That, that's our 25 there. No. 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 It's theirs. It's theirs. This is just the agreement. 100% uh, is 100%. All right. Yeah. 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 Let's, Let's emphasize that, right? <laughs> Yo, can we make that 50 instead of 25? I mean, just out of, just out of kindness of your heart. <laughs> no, there's, there's no kindness in here. <laughs> Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, opposed, no, clerk, call the roll. Bacobin? Yes. Eva? Yes. Peterson? Yes. DeYoung? Yes. Brainerhorst? Yes. Dan Stryland? Yes. On to resolution number 5947, entitled the resolution approving and, and authorizing the execution of a consent to collateral assignment of economic development grants from Harvest Investments, LLC, to Central State Bank. Mike, did you explain for you? Yes, Mr. Mayor. the city of Tella, Harvest Investments, and Central State Bank. Um, now as a background on this project, as the council is aware, in 2018, the city of Tella approved an economic development agreement with Harvest Investments to build a proposed development that's located approximately 1,200 feet south of Boston Drive. And to better orientate everyone, we have a map of the proposed development that we have right here. Boston Drive is located right at
property taxes from the development, property taxes from the development. So once the um, housing cooperative project is built, once the new homes are, are built on it, we would collect the rebate taxes if we receive $2.1 million over the next 15 years of property taxes from the development, we'll rebate $2.1 million to support the cost of the public infrastructure. Now, where this agreement comes into play, signing the grants to banks to finance the project, and that's what's being proposed this evening. They have the right under the agreement to sign the grants to the party they're chosen, Central State Bank. Our legal counsel has looked at the, the consent agreement they have right here and has reviewed it, and they are recommending approval this evening as they believe it is in accordance with the terms of the Southern Development Agreement. So what this simply does is assign the right to harvest investment of economic development and incentive grants to Central State Bank. This is the right that the developer has under the development agreement. So let's go ahead, please, for it. That's it. Okay. So, so in essence, um, what we're saying is that not only what's being proposed is harvest investments, is assigning their rights to economic development grants to Central State Bank. This is fairly common in the development business and is used as a mechanism to finance economic development projects. And so with that, Mr. Mayor, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions the Mayor and Council may have on this item. Thank you, Mike. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Ferguson? Fort Bacala? Discussion? I have a question, Mike, just to make, just to clarify. There will be no economic development incentives until the construction begins or until the construction is complete, is that correct? Correct. Before any grants are paid, what has to happen under the city's development agreement? Corey, can we go back to the map, please? We have a condition precedent that says the developer will build these streets right here dedicated to the city of Pella and they'll be built to city standards and they have to be accepted by the city of Pella. That's condition number one. The second condition of the development agreement is the developer doesn't receive anything unless there's property taxes collected from the development. This is above and beyond the base value which is there right now. If you were to go out there right now, or actually when we approved it, it was an open field. And so whatever that base ag value was at that time, that's frozen in time. And so in the incremental value that gets built on there that we're rebating, so the developer actually has to build the project. We have to receive taxes before any development grants are, are, are given to the developer. And what the developer is simply doing is they're assigning the rights to those grants to Central State Bank. And so that's all all that's at stake. It doesn't increase the city's liability. It's the right the developer has under the development agreement. We simply have to approve it. And the consent agreement, the big thing is we needed to make sure that it's in accordance with the terms of the development agreement. This was reviewed by our attorneys at the Alders Law Firm. They believe it is. Okay. Thank you. Can you touch just briefly on a question I had, Michael? Mm -hmm. That base is set as ag ground? Well, it, it, it is. When, before the project started, this had an assessed valuation on this 30 acres out here. That's frozen in time. That, that value continues to go to the taxing authority. So right. what we're talking about the rebates are only the increased valuation from this point forward. So as the new valuations get built on it, the property taxes, those would be the property taxes that would be rebated back to the developer for the cost of infrastructure that they had to build to the city standards that they dedicated to the city. So. Who actually sets that base value? Though? Well, that, that's set in the terms of the development agreement. What the terms of the development agreement says is on collection of this, when we set up the urban renewal area and establish our plans, the base value gets set at that point in time okay. on it. So the minute that the urban renewal area and we start collecting the certified debt on this, which means the developer would have had to build the infrastructure, right. dedicate it to the city of Pella, and then the minute they start building, let's say the housing cooperative project gets built, and we start, if we believe we're going to receive property taxes, exactly. that's the time we, we, we all of a sudden encumber debt on it, and that's the time we would certify on it, and that's when the base value would be set. So, it's not as clear as mud, but the, the well, end no, result is it, that there's a it is, I, I understand yeah. the tip process, but I was, you know, mm -hmm. that piece of land, if you went out and bought it, mm -hmm. would be worth a whole lot more than an 80 acre farm out somewhere, just because it's where it's at. Sure. So I was wondering how that was, but that will be set yeah. at the time by the entities yeah. involved. It's all based on the assessed value of the property, okay. so that, that's frozen. Okay. And so what we're talking about when you talk about rebates, it's the incremental value right. on it. So right. long story short, the developer has to build it to receive anything. So. Thank you, Michael. Any other questions?
Young, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Clerk, call the roll. Peterson? Yes. Resolution number 5948, entitled the resolution of the City of Pella Council approving the final plat of Boss Ridge Subdivision Phase 1. Mike, can you explain, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. What we have this evening is our plan for Phase 1 of the Boss Ridge Subdivision. <coughs> now, the Boss Ridge Subdivision and West County Highway 215 off on the drive is located right down here. Poles number 4 and 5 of the Boss Lawn and Golf Course are located right over here. And overall, this is approximately a 43 lot residential subdivision as approved by the Pella City Council in 2018. What we are considering approving this evening would be the final plat for lots one through 11. So it's right up here <coughs> in this yellow highlighted area, which is what is being close to the final plat. The developer is still working on the infrastructure for the rest of the remaining of the development, and they anticipate that that should be completed, at least infrastructure-wise, by mid-year of 2019 is the tentative time frame. The reason they're proposing a final plat now is they've had interest in these lots, and by accepting this component or approving this portion of the final plat, this would allow them to actually start selling lots just for the yellow area that we have down in here within here, these 11 lots, where the infrastructure is complete. So let's go ahead and see the portions. Now the terms are the guidelines that we need to follow in approving final plats. We need to make sure this evening that the final plat is in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, the subdivision ordinance, uh, this as well. And as council is aware, when we talk about there's two types of plans, the preliminary plan is the overall game plan, the infrastructure required for developments that was approved by the Pella City Council in 2018. Final plans are the final documents that are reported at the recorder's office and it's used for the transfer of land and oftentimes they don't include the infrastructure on the details of the infrastructure on it as well. So what we need to make sure is that the preliminary final plan is in accordance with Now let's go ahead and see the sporting. Okay. Now as far as our review this evening, we believe that the final plat meets the minimum requirements of the city zoning ordinance and also meets the requirements of the city subdivision ordinance. In addition, um, we spent an extensive amount of time in 2018 talking about the subdivision and setting up urban renewal and tying into the comprehensive plan. And we feel that the plat uh, is in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan as well. Based upon these findings, we are recommending approval this evening of the final plan, which would also accept the infrastructure or the development as well. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Danny, on this. We have about 750 linear feet of city street. We're going to be accepting this evening as council through this resolution 900 linear feet of sanitary sewer mains, another 750 feet of water mains, and approximately 400 feet of storm sewer that uh, the engineer for this project has, has certified that they were built in accordance with city standards. So with that, again, what this approval is, is our final phase of phase one, which is 11 lots of the 43 uh, lot residential subdivision of Boss Ridge. The remaining infrastructure for the development is scheduled to be completed by mid-year of this year as well. So this is just phase one, and this would allow them to start selling lots within the development just for this first phase, which would be these 11 lots coming from phase four. And finally, Mr. Mayor, it is important to note that the Planning and Zoning Commission considered this final plan at their January Does that fall in our electric, Nate? Yes. It does. Correct. All the utilities are in and ready to rock and roll? Uh, enough to feed those lots in that plot. Okay. Danny, we got room to shovel snow or anything down in there? I'm, well, hopefully by next year they'll have the other section open. Where they're not getting any built we will. We'll this year. We will. Three-point turn back in that cul-de-sac. Back in that cul-de-sac. You'll be able to get around in there? Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, close no. Clerk, call the roll. Steve Yes. Young? Yes. Bob Coven? Yes. Ranger Horse? Yes. Dan Strangland? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Motion carried. We'll move on to ordinances. Ordinance number 954 entitled an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Pella, Iowa by amending the PUD plan for the property located at 413 Main Street, City of Pella, Marion County, uh, Marion County, Iowa. This is the second reading. Mike, if you'd explain, please. Be happy to, Mr. Mayor. And as the Mayor said, um, with this amendment, this is the or rather proposed ordinance would amend the zoning regulation to make the plan unit development which was previously approved for the former Western School site. This request.
last year this amendment is being requested by REP Holdings and the orientator here on the map that was showing us on the big board was the former um, Western School site and the Dennis <coughs> diagram that you see up on the big board is actually exhibit number one um, on the PDD, which states that the development will show be in accordance with what's shown up here on the big board. Now, ultimately, when we talk about the Western School site, we're talking about approximately a 42 lot um, residential subdivision or a townhome, a townhome condominium development. The purpose of this development would be a very high-end con uh, condominium development. It's really intended to be a showcase development for Southeast Iowa, in fact, the state of Iowa as well. The reason for the amendment is when we approved this last year at the time, the developer intended to develop all the portion of the project under one ownership here. So the way how the PD was set up was to approve it via site plan. Since that time, when they talked to their financial institutions, they believe it would be advantageous for them to be able to market the financing of the town homes in a certain way that would require them to have individual lot lines for the town home portion of the that's going to require is to further subdivide this three acre parcel on the Webster School site. Now, well, since we were notified of this after the PUD was approved, um, there are certain elements that didn't comply with the city zoning ordinance, and that's what we're hoping to address through this amendment this evening. So, with that, Corey, let's go ahead. Really, we have two items here with it, and this is the big one when we talk about the subdivision. There is a portion of, of the and unit development when they went through their subdivision or the proposed subdivision that did not comply with the city three yard setback, which is 20 feet under the PUD. What's being <coughs> amended is to reduce that from 20 feet to zero feet just within the development. We really think this is more or less a housekeeping item. If we would have known at the get go with the proposed project that they intended to subdivide this and could have addressed this, this would have been included with the original PUD amendment. Second item is it includes a portion of the Alleyway, which was recently vacated by the city of Pella on this. And so if you go back to the map, uh, Corey, we had a small section of alleyway that was somewhere right here in this vicinity that was owned previously by the city of Pella that was vacated by the Pella City Council on, on this. And what's included is that small section of alleyway. You can almost see it. It's right here. Uh, here's about a 20-foot section of alleyway. That's just included in the legal description. So those are the two items under the PUD ordinance. But the long story short is developer decided to subdivide the property after the PUD was previously approved by subdividing it at crosswise with the city zoning ordinance on the rear yard setback and we need a minor adjustment on the rear yard setback to comply with the city zoning ordinance. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I believe that concludes our presentation. It is important to note that the Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved this amendment after January 7th. So we'd be more than happy to answer any questions the Mayor Council may have on this particular item. Mike, do I hear a motion for approval? Yeah. Support. Support is key value. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Please say. Uh, okay. Is there any, uh, when are they going to do the second part of it? Is there any talk of when? What's that? Well, they're, they're basically splitting the development, correct? Yeah. Is there any talk <coughs> of when that, the rest of it might be? Yeah. I'll, I'll have to update it. Not, I, I don't have them off the top okay. of my head as far as exact timelines, but I'll be happy to get that in the next year. I'll come to speak up on that. I mean, we're not talking years, are we? No. no. Okay. No, in fact, it's, I, I just can't recall. It's in the city's development agreement on the exact timelines when phase two has to be done. And it is re relatively soon, but if I throw out a date, it will be wrong. <laughs> so, so I'd rather be right on it no, and get that to you. So. That's not necessarily my call. I was just wondering if this was happening forthright. It will be happening very, very soon. In fact, yeah, I think good. our development agreement requires the demolition of the Webster School building by the spring of next year on this. So I can safely say that, but the rest of the dates I'm a little bit hazy on right now. So thank you. Any other questions? Go in, go in. Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Clerk, call the roll. Dion? Yes. Eva? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bachelman? Yes. Randerhorst? Yes. Dan Stratton? Yes. We need to move. Is um, there any that that's been re requested by the developers? Move to set aside the rules. Waive the third reading. Move motion to uh, waive the rules and set aside the third and final reading by Bachoven. Support. Support. Yes. 
Board Peterson? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, opposed no, clerk call the roll. Bachoven? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dion? Yes. Branderhorst? Yes. Van Strylin? Yes. 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 Carried. Move to adopt. adopt. Move to adopt by Bachoven, supports keep out. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes, opposed no, clerk call the roll. Bachoven? Yes. Keep out? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dion? Yes. Branderhorst? Yes. Van Strylin? Yes. Motion carries. We move on to claims. Abstract of bills number 2024. Do I hear motion for approval? Motion to approve and issue warrants by Ski Bob. Support. Support Mr. Island. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. Opposed, no. Clerk, call roll. Ski Bob? Yes. Mr. Island? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dion? Yes. Bachoven? Yes. Greater Horse? Yes. Motion carries. We move on to other business. Public forum. Do any council members have any other business? Bring forward at this time. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you. Um, Council Member Branderhorst and I had a, a great opportunity last Thursday to visit with 40 uh, residents of Fairhaven <coughs> about um, things that they find important in the community, and uh, it was very, it was very good opportunity for us to share some perspective and get there. More importantly, um, community center was a big deal for them. Um, I'm chuckling because we were talking about that earlier. But, um, <laughs> That surprisingly to me anyway, um, that came up from a couple different folks and just the value they see in it. They like walking there and um, just some of the other programming. They value the, the opportunity to go to the plays and some of the industry players, things that go on there. So um, it was a great opportunity to get out and listen to, to a group of folks that maybe don't always get heard. So it was, it was a great opportunity for us. They keep you on your toes. <laughs> they know they're Paul and Fitness. And, and they don't mind calling a little BS now and then. Oh, boy. <laughs> Great way to prepare for a political debate, yeah, honestly. Sure. There, was there was one takeaway that I did have uh, from that. There was a lady, and we were also talking about um, needing to attract young talent and keep young talent in our community. And she piped up and felt very emotional and very strong about keeping the community center in this center of the community. Mm -hmm. And she said, all I hear is about keeping all of, attracting this young talent and keeping them in Pella. And she said, what about those of us that did stay? And what about those of us that did work at Pella Corp and Vermeer for 30 plus years? I think we deserve something too, meaning that they deserve have the ability to walk to, she was literally wheelchair bound, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so she wanted to have the opportunity to ascertain the, the community center from that mode of transportation. Quite humbling. Yeah, Quite was. humbling. It really was. Thank you for making the time to do that. That's well, awesome. And that we Harold doesn't know it, but we did offer him up for the next round. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're on deck. Huh? Yeah. All right, awesome. One other thing, anybody ever been contacted about, now that we have that light on exit 40, boy, do we need a light on exit 42, so I'll just throw that out. <laughs> That's a DOT thing. Oh, I, know, I know it is, but I don't know if anybody else has been tapped with I've, that one. I've not heard anything. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we drive her to the teacher's get hit with that one. <laughs> Any other comments? I'll throw one in. Um, it's been weighing on me here. Three instances that I'm aware of. to be on the front end of that rather than having yes. to be reactionary on the back yeah, end. For sure. Nobody likes to be in that situation every time either. And we want to accommodate people. Absolutely. And so as long as no way small, it's not staff small. I mean, that's what's written in the book. But maybe we better take a look. And some of them are written in old ink, right? Mandy, we've seen that before in the yeah. original logs. Have you guys ever seen those? The original books of the minutes and stuff from the city council meetings. If you haven't seen it, everybody, they do exist. and. And we show them to the fourth graders, third and fourth graders from Pella Christian every spring. They come in and we do a mock council meeting and we show them the book. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. City Hall. Yeah. And they're here. Oh, they're we here. said that we have a regular council meeting here with the kids. It's an awesome experience. That's a fun it's, day. 
It's one morning. of it's one of my favorite days oh, wow. as mayor. Is That's is cool. Spend the morning with the city. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah. The, the city clerk records and the city council minutes. I think you're referring to. They're yes. at city hall. They are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Handwritten yeah. from the 1800s. They're awesome. Yeah. And Come back around. They're there. So. They're awesome. <laughs> really Some of those in Dutch. No. No, they're all in English. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, how are they stored? One of the old times, and I don't know if it's true, but if you look way back, the council would be Dutch, but the mayor was always English speaking, so that nobody could blow anything by him because they didn't understand it well enough. <laughs> that would probably explain why they <laughs> How are they stored? I'm more worried about archiving, deterioration, fire, damage. They're very safely secured in the vault, and they are on archival paper, so they're good. in very okay. good shape. Good, and, good. And we, st I still use that on minutes today. They're on archival papers. Okay, good. And electronic. Oh, well, it's backup. Yeah. yeah that's cool. good. Okay. <laughs> Anything else for council? I got one quick one. Any of you guys have been rock stars on snow removal? gone to a lot of different towns during that time. Oski, Knoxville, Grinnell, Newton. Thank you to staff. Guys get after it. They do. We yeah. run out of room to put it. <laughs> well, we can <laughs> work. And hey, the groundhog says spring's right around the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever he knows. We'll pass it on. <laughs> All right, very good. Anything else? I'll open it up to the public. Anybody have anything that they'd like to bring forward to the council's attention at this point? Again, same rules, speak into the microphone, tell us who you are, where you live, and limit it to three minutes if you can. Seeing no takers, do I have a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Chapter 388.91 to discuss marketing and pricing strategies or proprietary information of a city utility of it if its competitive position would be harmed by public disclosure and not required of potential or actual competitors no public purpose would be served by such a disclosure. Do I have that motion? Clark open. Support. Support Dion. All in favor, please say yes. Opposed no. Clerk, call the roll. Clark open. Yes. Dion. Yes. Rainer Horse. Yes. Dan Strangland. Yes. Eva. Peterson. Yes. We will retire to close session. All right, we are back in open session. Uh, do I hear a motion uh, uh, as it pertains to closed session number one? Seeing none, do I hear a motion as it pertains to items discussed under closed session number two? Seeing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Bachoven, support Peterson. All in favor, please say yes, opposed, no, and pull the roll. Bachoven, yes. yes. Peterson. Peterson, yes. 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 Yes.